we're back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our third segment, which is going to be talking about Tim Anderson and his DFA by the Miami Marlins. So let's get into that. So I was on the show actually when Tim Anderson did sign this contract, I believe back in February, was one of my first shows. And uh, yeah, it was um, an interesting signing, to say the least. I thought it made a lot of sense, though. Anderson, of course, was uh, his option was not picked up by the White Sox after having a couple rough seasons. Uh, back there in the north side of Chicago, south side of Chicago, and not north side, I believe. Uh, White Sox fan would get mad at me if I said that, because that's the Cup side. Um, I'm sure people, I get mad at people if they said the mess played in Brooklyn or the Bronx or Manhattan or something, so I get it. But overall, I thought it was really interesting and signing that made a lot of sense. Obviously, Anderson had come off a few rough years in Chicago, and signing to the Marlins, a team that had desperately needed shortstop for a few years, on a team that really did not have much to lose, signing him to this one-year contract that was basically prove it or you're gone from baseball made a lot of sense. Thought the Marlins were a good fit of a team again that doesn't really that didn't really have a lot of eyes on them playing in Miami, not the biggest of markets. And I thought it made a lot of sense for both player and team. And if he was good, he could be someone they could build around or trade at the deadline for some good pieces. And if he was bad, they could just move on easily. And it was the latter half of the option that happened. He was bad, and they ended up moving on from him. So. Looking at Anderson's stats here in Miami, they're, they're, they're pretty rough. I mean, you look at his uh, weighted runs created plus, and it was a 31, which was bad. That is that is very bad. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's really, really bad. So, yeah, he had 50 hits, 47 of them were singles. He had three extra base hits, all doubles, no triples, no home runs. Yikes, his... Um, his, let me see his ISO here as well was interesting. Let's see his ISO was hold on. Let me get that up. Uh, ISO is isolated power, of course. Uh, you know, going off that, his barrel percentage was two percent, which is bad. He had three barrels all year, which was not good. His hard hit percentage was uh, thirty, which was also really bad. So his ISO was point thirteen, which is probably as bad as you can get. So. Yeah, it was not a fun time for Anderson in Miami. I'm sure it was off the field that it was as he was playing in Miami. But on the field, it was really rough, and it was time for both parties to move on, I'd say. Um, there was no problems with him in the clubhouse. Apparently, Craig Mish, who was the top Marlins reporter, in my opinion, if you really want any, anything to know about the Marlins, please do follow his social media. He's great with that. He said Anderson was fine in the dugout. I know there were some past questions about that, so it seemed like that wasn't a problem there. It wasn't really recently moved on. and. Yeah, it's, it takes a lot to be really bad on the Marlins team, and Anderson was that. He really stood out with how bad he was, and I'm going to be honest and say I do think his MLB career is over. I don't know what I, I don't know what other chance the team's going to give him playing this poorly. And again, it's not like his defense is good. His defense has been bad for basically his entire career, but at the same time, he was such a good hitter that it really didn't matter. Looking at his career, I mean, you look at these years of 2019, 2020, 2019 to 2022. He was a really good player. He had weighted runs created plus of 128, 140, 118, 110. Those are really good numbers for a really good shortstop. A guy who was the face of that Cubs White Sox franchise was doing really, really well. And it is unfortunate how far he's fallen. I mean, he has some signature moments. Of course, that bat flip against Brad Keller, which really started the uh, let the kids play movement. I still remember where, where I was when I saw that. I was like, wow, this guy's cool. That's awesome. Because... I'm always a fan of players enjoying themselves in the game. I think bat flips are awesome. I think they grow the league, and I think anyone who doesn't like bat flips doesn't really like baseball because it's awesome. And playing the game the right way, which you sh- I guess you should do, but I don't think celebrating when you hit home runs is a bad thing. I mean, in my opinion, if you, don't want to, if you don't want the batter to celebrate when you hit home runs, don't throw them a home run pitch. That's just always been my opinion. But, yeah, I think he did a lot with that as well. Um, you know, also being frank, there's not a lot of black baseball players in baseball right now. It's, um, you know, not as much as there should be. And having one like him, who was um, as outspoken as he was, as good as he was, who played with as much personality as was, I think it is growing the game. I think it did grow the game very well. And I think that um, it was a, it was a, you know, he was a very good ambassador for the game in that way because diversity in baseball is very important. I mean, I, look, I think when you look at the um, what kind of fans baseball has. A lot of the time, I do think there should be a little bit of you know, differ, differential in you know, what what kind of fans we do have. So always growing the game in that regard is a great job, and I think Anderson did a great job in that. So was a, was a player I always liked. I always thought he was good. I mean, he has that signature moment where he 
of course, hit the walk-off in the Field of Dreams game for the White Sox, which was awesome. I still remember where I was when I watched that. It was so, so awesome. That game was great. His walk-off was incredible. And, yeah, just overall, um, Anderson was a great player for the White Sox for a good amount of years. The top prospect coming up did really well. Didn't play baseball till high school in Alabama and then ended up being a really, really good player for this White Sox team. So it's unfortunate how his career is ending, but... I think the writing was on the wall for a little bit amount of time. I mean, we saw last year it was it was it was. I didn't know if he was going to get signed by anyone after that whole fiasco with Jose Ramirez. Picked a fight with Ramirez, and then Ramirez knocked him out cold. I mean, he punched him right in the chin. So uh, that was a crazy moment as well. I don't remember a baseball brawl happening like that since Jose Batista and Rugen Odor. So you know, he kind of got clowned on social media for that. I know there's some off the field stuff involving his. Of family, we're not really going to get into that, but I know there was some stuff there as well. So, overall, I think the writing was kind of on the wall. I thought Miami was a good place to kind of restart his career, get back to playing baseball, and just it didn't work out. I do think at this point it's over in MLB. It does not look like he's really going to uh, continue to be the Tim Anderson he once was, which is unfortunate because, again, I really liked him. I always thought he was a really good ambassador for the game and uh, knew things we needed for it. So, I do think he'll be able to find some work, whether that's in Japan, Mexico, the new baseball league in uh, Dubai, which should be fun. Um, I think one of these things should should happen. But at the same time, it, it does look like Anderson's time in OB baseball was over. And uh, yeah, so um, it kind of is a sad downfall for what happened with him in his career. But again, had a really good had a really good peak. Was it, won a batting title, which again, doesn't mean as much as it once did, but still was a really good player. I think what eventually happened with him was his flaws became much more prevalent. Even when he was having these seasons of a 128 wood runs created plus, 140, 118. The thing with him was he never walked and he did not play good defense. Now, he did a lot of everything else, but not playing defense at shortstop is bad and not walking is bad. Now, again, when, you were hit, when he was hitting as well as he was and being as great of a player he was, those flaws would become a little bit swept under the rug. They'd be like, yeah, it's here, but he's a, such a great baseball player, we don't care. But when you don't play as well as you know as you are, those things become much more prevalent. I mean, Anderson's, I'll go to Anderson Simmons, for example. That's a guy who never really hit as well as he did, but was such a great defender that he was able to live off being a horrible, awful hitter because he was so good at defense at the shortstop position. Eventually, his time ran out as well, but because he was such a good defender, he was able to stay in baseball. Anderson was not like that. Billy Hamilton never could hit, but because he was so fast, teams would have him there. I mean, the same with um, a guy like, I'm getting him off the top of my head, actually, but maybe someone like Jared Dyson, who was so fast. I remember him back on those Royals teams. Um, so, yeah, overall... Uh, Terrence Gore, that was the name I was thinking of. Sorry, a guy who was so fast, couldn't do anything else, but he was so fast because he had that one skill set, he was able to stay in baseball. Anderson never really had that. So I think that's really what caught up to him at the end and overall was really what doomed him. So now looking at the Marlins, I mean, this is the second time they've done this now, eating money to get a player off their books. Avisal Garcia, who was a significantly larger contract, they did end up eating his contract. And he's, um, even though he has a year and a half left on that big contract, he did sign with them. He was so bad that they did have to let him go. You also had um, Luis Arias, who you traded and took his contract, so you get better prospects. That's different, of course, but still, Anderson, you released middle into his contract, which wasn't that much, but still, I mean, it wasn't cheap, especially for a team like the Marlins. So it obviously shows the Marlins are going to start over. They are going to blow up this team. I mean, I've talked about them a few times, but just going back, they have a lot of good trade pieces. Guys like Jesus Lazardo, guys like... Uh, sorry, Luzardo isn't probably going to be traded anymore He's because he got hurt. I'm just so used to saying his name. Guys like Tanner Scott, he's going to be someone that really is going to be um, you know, very, very highly wanted at the deadline because of how good of a lefty reliever he is. After that, you also, of course, have Jazz Chisholm, who could potentially be traded. Jake Berger's a guy. Josh Bell's a guy. Some other bullpen arms are available as well. So the Smarlins team really is going to blow it up. And moving on from guys like Anderson, like Garcia, who really were not performing well, is very clear of that and very much shows what direction this Marlins team is going into. They're going to be a very fascinating team to watch this deadline, and I'm very, very interested to see what is going to happen with them and what is going to end up being um, the decisions they make at the deadline, what they get back, who they end up trading. And yeah, overall, this franchise is going to a deep, deep rebuild, in my opinion. And moving on from Anderson was, I think, one of the big things of that. 
We saw it before, trading a rise so early into the season, um, releasing Javi Garcia. There's times of changing in Miami, probably for the best. And, uh, yeah, definitely will be an interesting team to watch as we go into as we go into the trade deadline. So, yeah, that is our third segment here, talking about Tim Anderson and his DFA by the Miami Marlins. We'll be moving into our fourth segment, which is going to be talking about, there we go, the American League Futures Game roster. Going to be doing this for the fourth and fifth segments as well, doing the American League and the National League. So, yeah, just talk about that and the guys on the roster and my thoughts on them. So, yeah, we'll see you after the break. So, thanks and bye. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content.